Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. This is the reworked version of CPVC that first came out in the 1980s and had problems with catastrophic failure. It is installed as a trunk and branch system, which means it's got a lot of fittings in it. It's even simpler to install than PEX because it's basically a cut and glued system. So you can literally plumb an entire house with nothing more than a hacksaw and a bottle of PVC glue. What that means though, is that this kind of system is more prone to pressure drop and lower flow because the way you cut that pipe, it's squared off inside that fitting. It doesn't fit all the way into the fitting. It's often not deburred properly. So there's little jagged edges of it hanging down and it induces a lot of pressure drop into your plumbing system. The reason builders do this is because it is absolutely the least expensive distribution piping system you can install. And again, I am seeing three quarters of a million dollar houses being built with CPVC plumbing systems. Like I told you guys earlier, I would not have it installed in my house. I would not buy a house with CPVC plumbing in it. That is just my opinion. It is absolutely code acceptable. They couldn't install it if it weren't. It's just the sign of a builder in my mind that's really trying to cut corners. And I don't think it's a robust piping system. A couple pictures to illustrate why this stuff can be problematic. Number one, just coming out of this water heater, eight fittings within about two feet of piping here. Every one of those fittings induces pressure drop into the system, but because it's a rigid plastic pipe, this is how you have to install it. It is rigid plastic, but it is still plastic. And if you put too much weight on it, it is going to bend and it is eventually going to break. D doesn't tolerate heat at all, so you cannot use it around, say, the, the vents, the discharge, the flue of a water heater. The biggest problems with CPVC, however, aren't these. It's number one, bad glue joints. This is kind of a, a chicken and egg type of thing. But the reason they're using CPVC is because it's cheap and it can be installed with unskilled labor. That unskilled labor doesn't take its time doing a proper glue joint when they're installing CPVC. So they don't cut it. They don't, well, they do cut it. They don't deburr it properly. They don't clean up that pipe. You're actually supposed to use a solvent cleaner to get any debris or foreign contaminants off of that pipe. And then they just slap a little glue on it, stick it together, and away they go. Another reason I don't like it is because it is not freeze or impact tolerant at all. It is a rigid piping material. Compared to PEX especially, it's really brittle. So if you hit it with something uh, as gentle as, say, a, a fast-moving wiffle ball, if your kids are playing wiffle ball in the basement because it's the middle of winter time and they can't go outside, I have literally seen instances where that fast moving wiffle ball hits a PVC supply pipe in a basement and can crack it. It's not freeze tolerant at all. So when water expands inside of this stuff, it doesn't give way like PEX does. That's what you're looking at in this picture. This is a, actually a, a frozen shutoff uh, from a condo. So when this pipe bursts because of freezing, it actually flooded all the condos underneath of it. It's all code approved. It's in the standards. Plumbers can use it. I just wouldn't plumb an entire house with the stuff. And it's worth noting that this is a different material than what we plumb the drain side of the system with. That is actually PVC. It doesn't have a lot of impact resistance either, and it doesn't um, hold up well in a freezing situation, but we're talking low pressure drain lines there. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.